So when I tell you I have been shredding through bosses in this game with incredible ease, I am not kidding. This Hook Claws build is super fun to play, destroys bosses, and it's pretty easily attainable throughout the game. So we're going to get into everything you need to create this build. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing you need to know is the overall disclaimer I put on all of my videos. This video has been recorded on New Game Plus 5. I am level 170, but this is very viable for a 150 build, so if you want the stat breakdown, just wait till the end and I'll get that to you. But this build is incredible. I love playing with Blood Flame, and I have never put together a Hook Claws and or Wolverine build before, but I think this does it justice because the majority of bosses that I have come up against have absolutely melted. Utilizing the Quick Step Ash of War as well as Blood Flame, you are going to have an incredibly fun playstyle, and you're also going to have a secondary dodge where you don't have to roll but you can just quick step right out of the way and it makes for a really fun time so let's go ahead and talk about the hook claws themselves the hook claws are going to be an incredibly fast attacking fist weapon that's going to have a slash pierce move set you're going to have strength scaling of d and a deck scaling of c and you're also going to have innate blood loss on the weapon at 60 however once you attach blood flame blade to this weapon that number is going to go up and you are going to shred through everything with the attributes required being 8 strength and 14 dexterity and its location being within Stormvale Castle, you are able to get this weapon incredibly fast and use it to get through the entire game. It is an incredibly fun way to play. I love the quick step dodge into the jump attack or into just the light attack slashes, and it is proven to be a very viable option, even all the way in New Game Plus 5. The weapon's going to have decent physical damage at 222 plus 133, but we are going to end up buffing this as we continue in the build, so you're going to end up doing more damage than that. Now, armor-wise, per usual, with any bleed build of any kind you're going to need to put on the white mask this does look hideous and it's one of the worst looking masks in the entire game however it does give you a 10 percent increase in attack power whenever blood loss is in the vicinity which is going to stack on top of a few other talismans that we have so if you want the most damage i would use the white mask but if you absolutely can't stand how it looks then use whatever helmet you want the white mask is going to be located in this area of mogwin's sacred palace you're going to be invaded by a few of the white mask assassins and after you you kill the third one they are going to drop the entire armor set and the white mask for you now before we get into the talismans let's go ahead and talk about the buffs of the build because the buffs are one of the most important aspects of this particular build so starting off we're going to use flame grant me strength you're going to have at least 16 faith with this build in order to get that extra physical and fire damage that flame grant me strength provides you're going to get an extra 20 percent physical damage and 20 percent fire damage with this particular incantation so it definitely spikes the damage up of the build the second incantation we're going to be using is blood flame blade this is going to enchant your weapon with fire attack power and it's also going to allow you to build up hemorrhage even faster the way this works is each time your flames from your weapon hit your enemy they are going to burn a little bit over time causing hemorrhage to slowly build up the more you hit your enemy the faster this is going to build up stacking on top of your blood loss you already have on the weapon and it's going to make for a devastating combo flame grant me strength is going to be located at fort gale and Kaylin right between two flame chariots here on the map. And if you're trying to snag the Blood Flame Blade, it's going to be dropped by a Teardrop Scarab in Liurnia the Lakes to the northwest of the Rose Church right here. And guys, you know I can't finish a video without stopping and thanking each and every one of you for being here and watching my videos. I appreciate it a ton. It does mean a lot, and the channel has grown so much. So if you've subscribed, thank you so much. If you've not subscribed yet, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell notification for more of this Elden Ring content. We're about to move into a ton of Shadow of the Earth Tree, and I absolutely cannot wait. So thank you once again. Let's go ahead and jump back into the video. All right, so for talismans, all of these talismans are going to be buffing either our attack power or our fire damage or our stamina. So all those things are going to be needed for this build, and we are going to skyrocket them a ton with everything we have combined here. So starting off in talisman slot number one, we have the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. This is going to boost our attack power by 20% anytime blood loss is in the vicinity. This is extra helpful considering we proc blood loss like crazy, so we are almost always going to have this stat on our build. Slot number two is going to be the Rottenwing Sword Insignia. If you don't have this, you can use Milson's Prosthesis, but the Rottenwing Sword Insignia is going to give you a higher increase in your attack power, giving you 13% instead of 11%. So for this reason, we have the Rottenwing Sword Insignia in slot number two because our successive attacks are crazy fast and we're going to get that boost very quickly. 
In slot number three, we have the Fire Scorpion Charm. Obviously, with Flame Grant Me Strength and Blood Flame Blade, we are going to be boosting our fire damage. So the Fire Scorpion Charm is going to increase our fire attack by 12%, but it is going to lower your damage negation by 10%, meaning you're going to take 10% more damage. However, everything dies super quick, and you're not really going to be taking a ton of damage with this build, so you shouldn't need to be worrying about that. So for slot number four, we're using the Green Turtle Talisman. I did have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman in this slot for a while, but I found that between Quick Step and the Fast Slashes of the Hook Claws, you are absolutely destroying your stamina bar. So if you find that you're not using the Quick Step Ash of War nearly enough, and you have a ton of stamina to spare, then definitely put the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman in this slot, but the Green Turtle Talisman is going to give us extra stamina recovery speed. It's going to increase our stamina by 15 per second for or three minutes, which is very helpful for this build, allowing us to get in and out of the fray very quickly with Quick Step, and also continually slashing over and over again while having enough stamina to do so. So all four of these talismans are going to be located in different areas throughout the entire lands between, but the Lore of Blood's Exaltation is going to be a boss reward for killing the boss in the Lindell Catacombs here on the map within the capital. The Rotwing Sword Insignia is going to be a questline reward for Millicent, and I will leave that quest video down in the description below so you guys can watch that. The Fire Scorpion Charm is going to be found in Mount Gelmir at Fort Lead on top of one of the ramparts of the castle. And the Green Turtle Talisman is found at the very beginning of the game in Limgrave, right inside of the Summon Water Village after using a Stone Sword Key. And the last thing we need to do before we get into the stats of the build is go over the Flask of Wondrous Physic. We're going to be using two tiers in this flask that are going to complement this build incredibly well, the first of which being the Thorny Crack tier. This is going to give us a 20% increase in our attack power with successive attacks. This is also going to stack on top of the Lord of Blood's Exaltation and the White Mask and and the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, allowing our attack power to absolutely shoot through the roof. Now the second tier we're using for the build is going to be the Flame Shrouding Crack tier. This is going to stack with our Fire Scorpion Charm as well as Flame Grant Me Strength, and this particular tier is going to give us a 20% increase in our fire damage. So overall, when we drink our Flask of Wonders Physic and all of our Talismans proc, we become incredibly powerful with this build. Now the Thorny Crack tier is going to be located at the end of the game in the Consecrated Snowfields in the north after you defeat the Erdtree Avatar. And the Flame Shrouding Cracked here is going to be located much sooner if you head to the east of the Smoldering Church and take out that Putrid Avatar at the Minor Erdtree. That's where this particular tier is going to drop. And lastly, we're going to go over the stats of the build. For this particular build, we are going to be leaning into Arcane, but our stats are going to be Vigor 50, Mind is 22, Endurance is 23, Strength is 15, Dexterity is 45, Intelligence is 9, Faith I have 24, and Arcane I have 61. Your stats will look a little bit different if you're running a 150 build, but it just means you won't have nearly as much faith and you probably won't have as much dexterity. And guys, that is going to be it for our Wolverine Hook Claws type of build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had an absolute blast playing through the game with this build, and I hope that you guys will as well. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you're getting some value out of these videos, feel free to subscribe, hit that bell notification so I can see you around the channel some more. Also, we have a Discord which I'll link down in the description below. And guys, remember, all the videos that I mentioned are also going to be down in that description. So until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.